Hi everyone, today is the second Sunday of Advent and we read from the beginning of the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 1 to 8. Prepare the way of the Lord. Every year we read one of the Gospels of Matthew, Mark or Luke and this year, year B, we're reading from the Gospel of Mark all through the year. And I have to admit, I'm quite excited because the last few months we've been studying and looking in a much deeper way the Gospel of Mark here in the parish in our Bible study every Sunday. So we've got to know and love the Gospel of Mark. So here are two interesting things about the Gospel of Mark before we start looking at today's Gospel. First of all, the Gospel of Mark is the Gospel of Peter the Apostle, because Mark is just a scribe of Peter's eyewitness testimony of the story of Jesus. How do we know this? Tradition tells us, but also we can see with the Gospel, the very first Apostle mentioned is Peter in Mark 1, 16. And the last Apostle mentioned at the end of the Gospel is in Mark 16, 8 is Peter. It's like a frame, like a sandwich. That's a subliminal message from Mark saying, this is Peter's gospel. The eyes of Peter seeing the story of Jesus. Second of all, the gospel of Mark is like an action movie because there's no room for discourses. Only two discourses. Everything is moving on. The word immediately is used 40 times. Mark keeps moving. If Mark was a movie, it would be like the Bourne Identity or Mission Impossible. It's just non-stop action. And the word and is used one in every 10 words and usually with immediately. So it's like and immediately, next scene. So Peter was an action guy and Peter gave us an action gospel, non-stop action. The second and third Sunday of Advent is always a Sunday where the readings in the church guides us towards John the Baptist and show us John the Baptist as being a sure guide to lead us towards the Messiah. I like to see John the Baptist as a guide and master of transitions. What do I mean by transitions? To understand transitions in life, we have to understand, first of all, with the eyes of faith, there are three kinds of stories in our life. There is my story, our story, and the story. Last week's gospel showed us that sometimes my story and our story can fall apart. But if we live it properly, it can guide us to the story. The entering into the big story always requires a letting go, a dying to the smaller stories. And we don't necessarily voluntarily do this, but life does lead you there, whether it be through a broken heart, a lost relationship, a loss of health, a loss of a job, moving home, losing a loved one. Life pushes you into these transitional spaces. And that's where people like John the Baptist can really guide us and how the spirituality of Advent can really help in these transition times. Sometimes uh, some spiritual authors call this liminal space. Limon, Lyman is like threshold, the space, the transition between one space and another space. We don't even think about it, but actually that's where a lot of spiritual work often happens. And some of the spiritual masters say the greatest spiritual work happens in these transitional spaces. Now, in these spaces, what happens? You can't control things, you can't fix, and you can't explain. And yet, that's where lots of miracles happen spiritually, where we grow in a way that we will never grow in comfortable comfort zones of control, being able to fix and explain everything. You'll notice that today's gospel has taken us from broken stories to a place in the wilderness. That's where John is. This is just transitional place. And I bet you, each one of you listening to me today will have found yourself at one stage or another, or maybe now, in a wilderness space in your life. This space is not a sneezy space to be because it's a vulnerable place, a place where you can feel lost or afraid or at risk and yet it's a school of spirituality the old story has ended and yet the new story is not yet clear it's like an in-between space and i'm waiting like john the baptist for one who is more powerful than i if you look carefully at the old testament and all of scripture actually you'll see and even the lives of the saints you see that before great things happened there was always this liminal transitional space and how you live that liminal space, that transitional space, that space of wilderness, defines who you become and what your story becomes afterwards. The wilderness I'm speaking about here is not like a geographical location. It's more like an inner geographical location. But it's a place where there's no place to hide. 
there's no there's no pretense you can't pretend to be somebody there's no bs as we would vulgarly say it's a place where you have to face yourself and the truth about yourself and this can be a place of liberation the truth will set you free as the gospel of john tells us john the baptist shows us that this place of wilderness can be a great spiritual place but only if we follow his lead and discover that we have to let go of self-reliance and lean on the one who's coming, the Lamb of God, the one who's more powerful than we are. That's where our true strength comes from and where the future of our story is leading, to lean on him and to expect the one that is mightier than we are and mightier and greater than any of the problems or issues that we are facing. That's why I see John the Baptist as our wilderness guide, the one who is crying out, prepare the way of the Lord. One more little detail about John the Baptist reveals a lot about his mission and about our calling and its location, 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 as they say. Where is John the Baptist baptizing? It's just north of the Dead Sea on the River Jordan. and You can go there today and visit it. It's a place where Elijah went up to heaven, but it's also the place where the people of Israel crossed the Jordan for the first time and entered towards Jericho into the Promised Land after 40 years in the desert. So it's a place of transition, a place of liberation, a place of letting go of the past and entering into new fields of possibilities and only leaning on the Lord. And that's why where John the Baptist was, he didn't even have to preach. Just where he was, draw the crowds in because this was a place of liberation. This was a place of hope. And this is a place where John the Baptist teaches to let go of our past, whether it be ugly, good or bad, and lead us into fresh fields of the Lord trusting in his love, not relying on ourselves and self-sufficiently, but leaning on the one who is mightier than we are.